Hello people, my name is Mohini Day and you're watching my very own talk show, What a Melify Wants. Well, today's episode is extremely special because I have someone who is not only a powerful female bass player, but also a vocalist, a producer, and a multi-instrumentalist. I mean, how often do you hear that? It brings me immense pride and joy as a woman to welcome my today's artist who has worked with renowned artists such as Prince, Quincy Jones, Glee, Lizzo, Bruno Mars, Steven Tyler, Lenny Kravitz, etc. Many, many more. It's impossible to cover her wide range of work, uh, extraordinary work that she has done. And uh, so I have her virtually in person with me today on my talk show to know all about her and her musical adventures. Please welcome the incredible and the very beautiful Nick West. <laughs> so happy to have you, Nick. I've been That's a huge fun. fan of you and I've checked out your work uh, so many times and uh, just uh, falling in love every single time I see you. Um, and uh, yeah, it's such an honor to have you on my show. Thank you for uh, doing this for me. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Well, um, you know, in my other episodes, I usually like to pick up like different kinds of topics uh, with different uh, artists. Uh, but today I want to keep it very simple because I'm very curious to know about your musical upbringing. Uh, because as a, as a woman, um, I really get fascinated when there is another beast, you know, and you're a beast I'm talking to, you know. Uh, I want, yeah, and I want, I want my Indian nation to know all about you. And I want uh, to introduce you to my Indian fans, you know, my Indian audience, because um, I'm very curious and I'm sure they are too. So uh, um, I'm going to start by uh, saying a few lines about what I feel about music, which is uh, music to me is an outburst of my soul. And I try to be as lyrical as possible. I think it has uh, a it is a powerful force which has the ability to evoke my highest aspirations my uh, you know feelings my emotions everything uh, so let's warm up a little bit here and go uh, to the root go to your root and tell my listeners uh, what is music to you and how did it happen to you so music to me it's very simple it's my heartbeat without music i i probably wouldn't even be here um, music has saved my life and I think many people's lives over and over again. So Absolutely. it's definitely, definitely my heartbeat. Uh, okay, where do I start? I started music when I was probably around three years old, just singing. So my dad, he, um, so I have all sisters. <laughs> so there's, there's four of us. And he sat us down and he taught us how to sing harmonies when I was, I was three years old. So that was my very first introduction to music. He played guitar and he played for a lot of gospel uh -oh. artists. Like, yeah. <laughs> he played for a lot of gospel artists like um, Dorinda Clark and Maddie Moss Clark, who's the Clark sister's um, mother. Well, music was always floating in the house. Um, my dad was a guitar player. He played for a lot of gospel artists. So, mm -hmm. I mean, on, on Sundays we went to church and I mean, I started playing guitar when I was around 13 because wow. I wanted to be so much. I wanted to be so much like my dad. Uh -huh. And um, and when I turned 16, like I was in high school and I heard Michael Jackson, do you want to be starting something? And I was like, oh, my God, what is that? What is that thing going? Boom, 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 boom. And it's crazy. It's crazy because it's like. You hear these songs a million times, right. but then for some reason that day, it, it, it stood out. And so um, I asked my dad what that was, and he was like, oh, baby, that's a bass. <laughs> and I was like, well, that's what I want to play then. So uh, I started playing. Yeah. <laughs> so amazing. He, took me to, he took me to a pawn shop and got a really cheap bass. I think it was like under $100. And, wow. And, uh, yeah, I know, right? And I started playing bass at 16 and the crazy thing is is i'm i'm left-handed so i was playing wow. guitar i was playing guitar left-handed i had a left-handed guitar but then when he went to buy me a bass he was like well they don't have any left-handed basses all they have is right-handed basses and at that time like i hadn't seen people like flipping basses upside down i didn't know what to do so my dad's like right. well i'm right-handed i'll show you how to play bass right-handed so i had to after three years of playing left-handed i have to i had to switch <laughs> And uh, learn how to play uh, bass right now. That, that must, have, that must so, have been hard, though. It was really hard. I mean, yeah. it, because my, my right hand, like the picking hand. Like oh your God, brain so must slow. be confused. Yeah. So slow. Like I had to work. 
I had to work on my picking hand for such a long time to get it to nice. move as fast as I wanted it to. Wow. So, um, so yeah, I started playing bass and when did I you think, seriously start taking lessons? Um, well, I never took lessons. I'm self-taught, but oh. I feel like, I feel like, um, but having I'm, a bass, having a bass player dad, you never took lessons from him. No, well, he played guitar. So oh, he played guitar. Okay, yeah, but he so must he have taught you some modes, some some the base, some of the basic stuff. He showed me. Well, yeah. See, that's the thing. So my dad, my dad was also self-taught. So he oh. played by ear, and the only wow. thing he really knew was like blues and like gospel, that right. sort of thing. So he would play things on the guitar and say, "Okay, go to E on your bass, go to A on your bass," and he would show yeah. me where that was. Right. But as far as actually, um learning any theory or really learning <laughs> really how the fingering is supposed to go right everything i learned i learned from youtube wow that's um, amazing yeah i got on i my, my my very first like learning experience was when like my dad took me to church he brought my bass he had my bass amplifier he took me up to the pulpit because that's where he played guitar and okay. he's just like sit here and just play what you hear and i'm like I don't know how to play anything. I don't know what I'm doing. And he's like, just use your ears. So I, I've been I've been using my ears ever since. So that was my very wow. first like that's, learning that's a, experience. Wow, amazing. That's uh, that's pretty much similar uh, to my story, actually, because mm -hmm. uh, having a bass player dad myself, of course, he taught me a few things, but then it was my journey after a point because yeah. he was self-taught too, you yeah, know? Yeah. And then I had to teach myself a lot of other things which were important to survive, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's, that's crazy. Exactly. Amazing. Wow. Thank God so, for YouTube. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. All the dads. I mean... Having dads like we did, I think we were really lucky to have dads who pushed us to do something that we yeah. really wanted to do, you know? Yeah. There are people and kids out there who don't get the same amount of support and, yeah. uh, you know, uh, even, uh, you know, having the same kind of mentality, having parents as musicians or even parents just related to music or having an understand sense of understanding of uh, towards music really helps in upbringing of a child, I feel. Yeah. 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 Definitely. If if you want to pursue music professionally, so yes. tell me, so tell me, when was the time when you you knew that oh you were becoming a pro player and now you want to pursue this like professionally? You want to do this for the rest of your life? Was there a point in your <laughs> life you felt like that, or it just happened? It. I never wanted to be a musician. I never. This was something that was like, oh my god, I want to be like my dad and I want to play guitar. For him, it was like a hobby. And yes, he played for gospel artists, but it wasn't like a job or profession for him. My dad was into like computers and programming and stuff. So, right. I mean, for me, I, I always wanted to be uh, an engineer because I was always really good at wow. math, really good at science. And, and that's what I wanted to do with my life. And um, I was in school and my dad's like, oh, I was like, you know what? I think, you know, I'm, I'm quitting the bass. I'm not going to play the bass anymore. I'm going to be an engineer. Like, this is what I've been, <laughs> I've been primed for because I was in, like, gifted schools ever since I was six years old. So it's like, it made no sense for me to be a musician when my whole path has been... You know, like, that was, that was another theory. question of mine, which was, did you ever think of doing something else apart from playing bass, you know? Yes. So this was... I, <laughs> that's what I wanted to do. Like, I, uh, I still to this day... I love when somebody asks me like a crazy math or calculus question. I'm just like, oh, I just love math so much. But anyway, wow. yeah, so I, um, I really got into playing the bass professionally because people thought I couldn't do it. Mm. Because I'm like, I've always been good at a lot of things. And I was like a straight A student. I wanted to be like the best at what I'm at, at, at everything that I study. And the bass was the thing that people were like, oh, man, you know, you suck. Oh, she man, can't do it. Yeah. Like, oh, man, you yeah. know. Usually, me usually in India, it's like, usually in India, if, if um, I mean, back in the days when I, because I was also, you know, um, uh, when my parents had me, everybody was like, 
oh, you didn't have a son, you know, like you had a girl, okay. <laughs> they were not very happy, you know? And then when my father started teaching me bass, everybody was like, oh, okay, she can play, okay. But no, then they were starting, yes. yeah, you know? And then, but but like you said, you know, people around you, they end up saying that, oh, you know, it's just for the matter of time, maybe she probably will give it up or, you know, that's it. Like she can't do no more or she yeah. weak, you know, stuff like that. And that gave me the, you know, fire inside it. There was this fire inside me. I wanted to prove to them that no, we, we ain't weak, we strong, you know, exactly. we stronger than exactly. you, you know, <laughs> I want to show you. <laughs> exactly. And, and, and that was my thing really showing, really it was just those guys, you know, teenage boys, that thought that I was like, eh, or yeah, yeah. it's whatever, the musicians, yeah. the, my musician friends, yes. showing them that, oh, yeah, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do it better than you, you know? And yeah. so, and now like, those guys are like, and oh, they want to show God. you your face, yeah. Yeah, and now they're like, oh, my God, Nick West, yeah. awesome. Yeah. I'm like... Don't you think, don't you think what the people who were like, you know, uh, being bad to you as a kid growing up after you started gaining all this exposure and, you know, having all this success and achieve achievements, they come to you and they want to make contact, you know, yeah. they want to yeah. get in touch with you back again. And then we are like, hell no. Right. But you know, it's so crazy because it's like when you're a kid, it's like those are the years where you're really like forming yourself and forming your brain. And those things hurt. Like those are things yeah, that you kind of totally. never forget. Yeah, you so kind of never. Hard forget. for me, you know, when they're like, "Oh yeah, we want to be in your band." It's kind of like, "Eh, uh, I'm in your band. I'm good." So. <laughs> I like that. I don't really have a band. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like so that. I'll see that the next time, yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so that That's was my story. I um. I started just just writing. I wrote a song. It's crazy. Um, I, I wrote a song called Black Beauty because mm -hmm. Fender contacted me out, out of nowhere. And I'm like, I'm not even a pro. I'm not even. How old were you yet. then? Mm -hmm. Like, when was when was the time when uh, Fender contacted you? What was that time? And was it during the starting, like when you just stepped into the industry and started playing with, you know, people? Yeah, so when it was it was actually right before I stepped into the industry, I had wrote a song um, called Black Beauty, and nobody listened. Nobody wanted me to be in their bands. I couldn't even get a gig playing in a band in my hometown, like as a bass player. Oh. And I, they would hire guitar players before they would hire me. And so I'm like, okay. So I'm like on Craigslist trying to find a gig. And instead of putting in Nikki, I just, I shortened it. I'm like, well, maybe if they think I'm a guy, they'll hire me. And so I shortened it, shortened my name to Nick, Nick. instead of Nikki. And girl, let me tell you, I got two calls back, two callbacks. And when I walked into the first one, they were like, dude, we, we thought you were a dude. Right? And so oh I, I my got God. that gig because I, I auditioned and I was there anyway. But it was so crazy. So... I just started writing songs on my own and Fender somehow found me because they liked my song Black Beauty. Do you think that and was like a big turning turning point for you in your uh, you know, musical growth? Definitely was a turning point because when Fender found me and put me on their website and put me in their ads, mm. Dave Stewart of Eurythmics, he contacted me through Fender. Um, oh. And then after meeting Dave Stewart, it's like everything else kind of it Line just let like, you open many doors, yeah. Yeah, and I was like, "Well, I guess I'm a bass player now. I guess I'm. <laughs> I guess this is my path. I guess this is what I'll do." Yeah. So it's crazy. Then you, then you probably had made up your mind saying that no, I don't want to do no engineering anymore. Yeah, and my dad was so mad. Oh man, he was like, <laughs> "What? You're too smart to be just a musician." And I'm just like, "Well, if you think, if you think that I'm a genius, then why don't you let me try this musical path?" And yeah. I'll work just as hard at this as I yeah. would at engineering. And Absolutely. so he finally let up on it. And um, yeah. So. I think I, I I always believe like, let me give you an example, like what I think is like, we have these beautiful hair, right? We women have like yes. amazing hair. We show love to our hair, it grows, right? So if you have the hunger towards anything that you want to do and you show love towards it, I think the universe will give it back to you yes. at some point, Agreed. if not sooner, later. Yeah, you know, completely yeah. agree. Yeah, but true art works. There's no shortcut for that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's no shortcut. For that. Yeah. I want to ask you, uh, what was that first 
apart from this turning point, what was that first big thing that happened to you in your musical growth? Like for me, for example, when I stepped into the industry, the first person that I was introduced to was uh, Ranjit Bharat, who was the drummer of John McLaughlin, you know? Uh, he was very good friends with uh, my dad and they were they used to play together. And uh, my dad took me to him and then uh, he took me under his wings and I started playing with him. And he was great at like, you know, polyrhythmic uh, stuff. And that's how my time got really uh, good, you know? Yeah. and. Um, and as Indians, we actually have great time because we are yep. good mathematicians, you know? <laughs> yeah, you have great time. And we, we are so like, you know, we have Konako, all the Takadimi Takitas and stuff. So we yeah. have that side of the world. And that's yeah. why I think we have good time sense. And um, since I was only playing with myself from the age of like, you know, five till the age of like 11, uh, having... Um, uh, starting to play with a drummer at the age of 11 was like a different ball game. It just opened like a new, uh, you know, world. I was like, oh my God, okay, now I have to keep up because he's way more powerful than me, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and I used to think that I'm just playing the bass, oh, I feel good about myself, you know? But then when you start playing with musicians who are way better than you, you're like, ah, oh, you need to do a lot of work, you know? Oh, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. So he was like uh, my kind of like my second father who introduced me to the music industry. I started doing gigs with him, like playing Friday, Saturday nights at clubs with him. Oh, nice. uh, wow. And that led me to like, you know, um, playing with a lot of other big people, you know, in the in India. Um, so I want to know what what was that first like collab or meeting you had with somebody? Who was that somebody and who, you know, made space for you in the industry? You know, it's so crazy. I feel like there were there were levels of it for me. Mm. So when I when I first met Dave Stewart, I, I didn't know who he was. Mm. So um, they he called and he's like, "Hi, this is Dave Stewart of Eurythmics. I want you to be in my band." And I was like, "Oh, that's awesome!" And then I got on Google, and then I found out who he was, and I was like, "Oh my god! Like I've I've heard these songs before. Wow, who is this guy?" And so. Um, I was so nervous. You and I have so much similarity. I can't tell you, <laughs> you know, because the biggest pop musician and the, like, you know, he's like, you know, a four time, five time Grammy award winner in here. I, I, you probably must know like A.R. Rahman. Oh, uh, yeah, it, through Dave. That's uh, yeah, see, yeah, he, they both have worked together, correct? Yes, so I've exactly. been working with Mr. A.R. Rahman for the past eight and a half years, right? Wow. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Know, yeah, and when he called me, when he called me to be a part of his band, I didn't know who A.R. was. You yeah. know, I had heard a, a lot of like his hit songs, but literally like I played on a song because I used to go to the studio. They would call me uh, to play on some of the background scores or jingles. And I would never ask, what is it for? I just go and do, do my job and then come back home. So it was yeah. one of those days I just went and I did my job and I came back home. And then I got to know that it was A.R. Rahman's song. I was like, yeah. oh, okay, that rings that rings a bell. Let me Google him. And then I Googled him. I'm like, yeah. oh, shit, he's really big, okay? Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Like, you and I have such a similar story. <laughs> it's so crazy, so crazy. And so, of course, you know, when I met him, I was like, oh, my God. Like, like this yes. is crazy. And he was my first introduction to just the industry at all. Like, I, I, I was so green. Like, I knew nothing right. about the industry, nothing about really playing on stage with yeah. like an audience that was more than like 10 people. Right. <laughs> so, um, you know, it was, it was crazy. And um, the drummer that I was playing with, his name's, his name's Randy Cook and he's played with Dave for many years. I mean, he was just, he's just such a perfectionist. Right. And it's, I feel like me as a bass player playing with him, it just, it pushed me to be, to be better. Because I have this saying now, if the people in your band and the people around you are not better than you, better you than need to get a new band. You need to get a new band. So, yeah. Um, yeah, Dave Stewart was my firsthand introduction. And, and it, it was just, it was levels from there. It's, it's, it's like every level, right. I was scared. I was scared into going to, into every level, you know? Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. yeah. Wow, yeah. amazing. It's amazing. He taught me so much, like he introduced me to so many different people. I mean, same AR Ramen, all everybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy how they both know each other, but we never talked to each other I know. ever before. Although I used to watch your videos. 
like I would watch your videos and I would like you know just have fun what looking at you on YouTube and like Facebook and Instagram people would share but never until I started doing like this my talk show I was like I need to have her you know thank you <laughs> Awesome. yeah I'm like i need so to talk to you crazy. yeah so crazy like they should have been like oh hi meet the bass player that i oh hi meet the bass player that i'm that i'm working with but yeah it was it's so crazy never, <laughs> never yeah yeah were you at nam last year i was at now yeah i was at nam i did um the it was a jam card fender jam card thing that they had going on this past year, right? <laughs> I think I saw you. I think I saw you. I was with yeah, my mother. Uh, I think I saw you. I, I took a glimpse of you. Were, you were playing there. And I, I wanted to talk to you, but then I was getting late for my performance. So I had to like, ah, okay. Uh, I'll talk to her. Hopefully I can find her after my performance. We got to meet next time. We gotta yeah, meet next so time. I missed you. Yeah, we got we to gotta meet next time. But I don't think NAM is happening next year, is it? No, it's I not. I think it's, yeah. 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 Uh, now, you know, in my earlier episodes, I've spoken about evolvement, development, uh, transformative individuality that happens over the years, you know. I feel like we adapt to uh, the environment that we grow up in, you know. Today yeah. I'm here, if I'm in the U.S., I, I start sounding like an American person, you know. Like, I, I'm, my flight <laughs> takes off and my accent changes. It's so funny. Yeah. So I feel like we as human beings have the capability and ability to adapt to nature and environment so easily, you know. Uh, but yeah. like everybody's journey is so different. Um, I want to know how you evolved as a person and was it the same growing up to be a musician or were there two different paths that you had to go through to find this one route which made you have this marriage between your music and you as a person? Um... Like, you know, like sometimes what happens is, I'll give you an example. I, I know it's a very deep question, <laughs> but, uh, but like um, with me, I was, I was an introvert as a kid growing up in the school days, you know? And when I started playing bass, I started uh, uh, to, uh, you know, find out that I have this little swag inside me that comes out when I only play, play the bass, you know? So I was kind of confused. I was yeah. kind of confused that am I this shy person or am I also feeling sexy, you know? Yeah. Like, am I, do I have, you know? <laughs> it's confusing, you know? As a kid growing up, you're, you're like seven, eight years old and you're like, yeah. who am I, you know? But <laughs> when I did my first concert, then I knew that, okay, you know, this is who I want to be. Yeah, you know, yeah, did, she, yeah. did she go through that? Um, for me, it was kind of it was kind of opposite. So, I've always been an extrovert. Like I'm the life of the party. Let's go, let's go. I've always been that chick in school that was just like, yo, she knows what she knows where the party's at, or <laughs> you know, I was just, just cracking jokes in class. That right. was just me. Um, but then when I started playing the bass. For some reason, it it flipped. Like I got really shy. I got really um, like I start just standing still, <laughs> playing the bass, standing still. You know, just doing and and really what it was is I was of course on YouTube and then watching other bass players' videos and seeing that 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 was kind of the standard unless right. you were like Birdie and White. Right. That was kind of the standard <laughs> where you know everybody just kind of like stood there. And mm. just kind of like play, yeah. maybe bob their head a little bit, and so. Or you could like, be okay. like Gary Willis, who dances in that same position and play, still plays his ass off. You, you know. What I'm <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, you know, just how you know, it, it's 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 the bass player like swag thing, you know. Yeah. And so I was like, okay, that's what bass players do. I need to be that. And so I started doing like the bass player swag thing, you know, where I was standing <laughs> still and just kind of doing that. And then after my first show like my first solo show, my sister was like, yo, you're this like crazy, outgoing, wild person. And even when we're at home, like you turn flips and you're like just doing all kinds of crazy stuff, do it wiggling on the floor just for no reason, just to make you <laughs> laugh. Yeah. Why don't you take all of who you are? You love dressing up, like you love being completely outrageous for no reason, take it to the stage. <laughs> Yeah. Take it to the stage. Stop being, okay. stop being like everyone else. And I was wow. like, really? You don't think that'll be 
like too much. He's like, be you, be a hundred percent. Be too much. Yeah. Yeah. And so I started being a hundred percent me, which is too much, you know, and People that's, like that's what much. really works. That's what really works for me. Just Absolutely. because I was authentic. Yeah. Like, now look at you. You're taking over the world. Oh, man, Not oh, just God. the stage. Just, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's my thing. And so it's like, some people will probably look at a video and be like, oh, no, she's doing way too much. And then they'll come to a show and they'll be like, OK, no, this is her. This is who she is. OK, we get it now. Right. You know, right. just seeing a picture yeah. versus actually talking to me and like seeing. Yeah, I, like I, 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 I don't know? like I don't like people who are like two different personalities, like on stage. They'll yeah. be like this wild. And then after you're off stage, you're like. Oh hi. Okay. Okay. Bye. Really shy. <laughs> nerd, right? Yeah, it's confusing. Like, right. somebody else. You were somebody else up there. <laughs> you know. Right. Right. So I'm crazy. Yeah. So I I take it all to the stage, yeah. and yeah, that's, that's like a part of my whole brand. Absolutely. I love that. I love that about you. Um, you know, for a touring musician, practice routines uh, are different from person to person. Now we have all this time to ourselves. It's different uh, times have changed. And I want to know what has changed post this COVID situation for you. How was it during a normal day back then? And how is it now? Well, normal for me was touring all the time. Yeah. I was always gone. I was always going around the world. Yeah. Doing my did you, shows, doing my did you find... would? Did you find any practice time in between touring or your sound checks would be like? Uh, the my practice? sound checks would be my sound. Yeah, my sound checks would be practice. We OK, so during my shows, we have like a few songs that we do the same every single time. And then there's a lot of improvising that goes on, like depending on the audience, I'll play with the audience. And I'll and the crazy thing is like my band's like. We never know what you're going to do because you always keep us on our toes because you might change it up like at the last minute. And so for me, I think I would get my practice time in with the band on stage. But then the hotel room, I might say, OK, let me just practice this really quick in case I in case I use that on stage tonight. It's just right. You know, so on mm -hmm. tour, I feel like. And are you the kind of person who uh, likes to warm up until an hour before getting up on stage? Or are you the kind of person who does not warm up at all? Well, I warm my body up mainly. Um, but, you're, but, but that's like, that's your personality. You're already warmed up. I'm, I'm warmed up. I am warmed up. And t let me tell you, like, I don't drink caffeine or Red Bulls or anything like that. Like, it's yeah. like I sleep. I, I hold in all of my energy and then like two hours before my show, I'll wake up, <laughs> I wake up, you know, I'll, I'll do my makeup, stretch a little yeah. bit. And then like, I won't talk for two hours before ah, my show. That's another um, thing. I want to talk about your outfits. My God, I <laughs> effing love them. I cannot say the word because then I'll have to beep it out, but love them. Who designed them? Yeah. You designed them or actually it's a combination of things. So I actually minored in fashion design. So I've been I've been drawing like fashion since I was seven years old. I've been into fashion. So a lot of the stuff, like I might buy a cat suit, like a simple cat suit, and then I might sew beads onto That's it. That's another similarity we have, Nikki. I designed my own clothes too. No, are you serious? Okay. Okay, we gotta do something together because we're we're just too similar. We gotta okay. do something. Yeah. <laughs> That's so insane because, oh you know, God. I went to a fashion college too. I wanted to become no. a fashion designer. I wanted to become a fashion. I never wanted to be a bass player. No. <laughs> wow. That is so crazy. Yeah. I, I minored in fashion. Yeah. I, I took fashion for like two years. And um, I, did, I, I was not aware of that. That makes me so happy. That's crazy. Yeah. I mean, I did, I did you know, I can sew. I can... You know, pick, I pick out the textiles, Ew. like you make patterns, yeah. like you do all that stuff. But I'm self-taught. So, like I'm not a pro at sewing, but like I can, I can, I can make stuff that people can wear, and I can wear. But it won't be the most professional. Yeah! Wow, that's so crazy. But yeah, so I, <laughs> I'll like I'll deck out something like a simple cat suit, or I might sew something from scratch if I have the time. Or um, yeah. like for some designers, like they just give me stuff. They're like, yo, we see that you like cat suits that are decked out. Here's some cat suits. So yeah. it's kind of like a combination wow. of. Amazing. Things. I love it. 
I love that pink uh, cat suit you have, and with your hair. I think that's oh, yeah. also like it has like a highlights of pink. It's yes. so cool. Yeah, love that. The feathers. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Uh, we're towards the end of the questions now. Um, just a few more, and then we'll play this rapid fire round. Um, okay. Have you faced any challenges growing up as a musician? What was your biggest challenge? Uh, my biggest challenge was. Like I said, being left-handed, really learning how to play right-handed, right. and then being mm. accepted, being accepted by by the guys, you know, because there weren't like a lot of female musicians that I could be like, oh hey, let's start a band. It was guys yeah. that I had to, I had to, I had to prove to guys. Yeah, and so yeah. um, so that was really hard for me because there was a point right. in time where I was like, I quit. I can't do this. Like, I'm not good. I suck. You know, I didn't go to school for this. I'm not good. And my dad yeah. was like, I never hey, went boys. to music school too. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, it's like, my dad told me, he's like, these boys, you're letting them get to your head and just know you need to, you need to, you don't have to worry about being the bass player that goes crazy on the bass all the time. Yeah. Group. Yeah. Groove, groove and stay in the pocket. Learn how to groove and stay in the pocket. Absolutely. And that's going to get you paid. That's going to get you yes. jobs. The other stuff okay. is going to be nice when that's they a big saying. You. But yeah, because all the guys I knew, they were doing all this like all the time. And they yeah. thought that I sucked because I just wanted to stay in the pocket at that time because I was new to it, you know? But right. Yeah, that was right. a big challenge. Well, nobody got the pocket like you do now. So. <laughs> You're so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have any goals or dreams as a kid growing up? Um, well, I really just wanted to be the best. I was just that girl in class that was like, oh, I know the answer. Oh, you know, just a straight A student. I just wanted to be the best at whatever it was that I did. And anytime that I got less than an A, I would pitch a fit about it. So I was, yeah, I was just that girl that wanted to be. You know, I was such a, I was such class. a dumbass. Like even if I knew, I was such a dumbass that uh, in my school, if I, even if I knew the answer, I would raise hand, and then people, my my teacher would be like, "Yeah, Mo, answer," and then I'd forget the answer, like <laughs> or just like be nervous. Even if, <laughs> like even if I know the answer, I I just go blank, and I won't say it because I don't have confidence. But <laughs> it's so funny, yeah. Um, uh, last question. Uh, when did you hear of me? When was the time when, when you learned about me? I want to know. Uh, I'm curious. Somebody tagged me in something on Facebook. And oh, said, you know what? Uh, Scott based lessons. I think huh? that was Scott based lessons. Maybe. Lessons? I, don't YouTube. I don't remember what it was, but I think somebody might have tagged me. And then I think it was like um, multiple tags of like female bassist or something like that. And you know, yeah, so because, because Scott, the, the, the bass player, Scott, who does the Scott bass license. Yeah, yeah, thing, Scott. I, I interviewed with him a couple of times. And it, it might right, have been, so he made a video. Yeah, it might have come from his page. Probably. And, um, yeah, that was the first time. And the crazy thing is, is like I, I, I'm on Facebook, but then. Like, I don't see my tags for, like, weeks sometimes. So I went in there, and it was, like, a few weeks past, and I was like, oh, this is great. And I'm like, I feel like an, if I respond to this, I'm going to feel like an idiot. Like, he posted this, like, a month ago. <laughs> and then he right. did, like, I think he did a, um, was it the female basis thing that he, a uh, video that he did? Yeah, I think uh, the top ten or something, the top five or yeah, something I think, something like yeah I think yeah something like that where he did all females and it was really great because Scott's really good at like if people that I don't know introducing me like I know Ida I know Divinity um but I didn't know you and I think there, there might have been somebody else on there that I did a few know, more but, yeah 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 this is amazing right. I was yeah I know I got to know a few more I was like wow I didn't know them then I went and I checked them out I was like wow yes, there are some exactly. game space first. Yeah, and then, and he was like picking out. Uh, Scott was uh, taking uh, each of our special licks and trying to play them on the bass, and he was like featuring oh, okay, us. Okay, okay. Yeah, it was cute. Yeah, I love. Scott. Um, He's so sweet. 
I want to know this. How much of your playing, especially uh, solos, is completely improvised over chops and patterns that say you have worked out before? Because, you know, some situations need that. Um, yes. And uh, um, say you worked out before. And if it's both, then how do you keep the balance? I'd say that it's both. Um, it's some both. of them are worked out. Some of them are worked out uh, prior to. I mean, mm. like the basics. Like, okay, I'll probably play this combination here. Sometimes it changes when we're on stage. Probably because yeah. I forget. Probably because I forget and do something else. Um, <laughs> some of them are completely yeah. rehearsed where this is the solo that I play because crowd the crowd goes wild with this particular combination of it. So this is the one that I'm going to play. Some, some solos are just over. Uh, some solos are just evergreen. You can't change yeah. it because exactly. people would want to hear that. Exactly. Yeah. And then there are some that are completely improvised on stage. And if you ask me how I, yeah. how I did it and to do it again, I probably would have to watch the video to figure out what I did because I don't even know. Right. Of course. But so, I yeah, think, like, combination of both. do you enjoy that freedom? Do you enjoy uh, the freedom? Do we just, you know, jam on stage and, you know? I do. Um, I'm a person that it, it structures hard for me. Structure is hard. And this is probably mm. why. <laughs> so, you know, I've played with, you know, different artists and stuff like that. But Dave Stewart's the one that fired me. He was like, okay, you're an artist. You're a bird and you need to fly. So I was like, no, but I'm a bass player. But no, but I want to play, you know. And so yeah, I realized after that moment, it's like people were saying things in me that I didn't even see in myself. Like, okay, I'm a solo artist. I need to be in the front. And I need to, you know, do what I do best. And I, I, I really like the freedom. I love being able to do whatever I want to do on stage, changing it up, not playing a song, or just yeah. doing something completely off the cuff. So, yeah, totally. for solos, I love the freedom. And I, I feel like some bands also uh, with different kinds of people and different countries is different. Like Japanese people are much more scripted and they yeah. like every yeah. night to be, you know, very like exactly the same you know exactly. if you're playing this solo tonight they will time it they will work the lights according to what you're playing and it has to be yes. the same every night you know they don't <laughs> want to so give true. their audience a bad night you know yeah uh, whereas in india most of the shows are spontaneous you know some of yeah. the shows they don't even have rehearsals you know they just have like a little bit of form and uh you know konakul is there so sometimes we end up meeting for like a karnatic concert it's a mm -hmm. genre and um no rehearsals you just come on stage and you somebody starts grooving you follow you know by year and then uh, somebody starts soloing starts playing a melody you start you know uh, improvising yourself and uh, detecting all it. the parts yeah and I then somebody starts playing like a unison you just on the fly pick it up you know yeah exactly and, yeah that's how we did growing up in church like that's that's what happened like that's yeah playing by ear i used to Same play in the church people. too with my dad yeah. yeah same thing like we get together and i don't yeah. know like my dad has has 12 brothers we get together wow. and they all play an instrument they all do something wow. flute sax good keys something and they yeah. just improvise and i think that's that's the same that's what i love doing the most wow right. i've never been right i've never been to india never been yes I think I should. I think I should do a bass festival or something and get like you and Dibnity so and fun. have like a woman, you know, uh, awesome. party. Yeah. Um, this question is taken from uh, some of your uh, YouTube videos, so I do want to ask you this question because I I know everybody wants to know how did you meet Prince? How did you meet Prince? Or how did you? How did he discover you? How did that happen? So I was playing. Um on something called the drum channel and the drum channel, the drum channel. Features, okay. Yeah. The drum channel features, um, legendary drummers and, um, sometimes upcoming drummers. Um, this yeah. particular time, I think they had, they had Sheila E prior, prior to this. And then there, okay. there was an upcoming, upcoming drummer name was Hannah Ford. It's Hannah Welton now, uh, um, blonde drummer. And her dad called me and said, Hey, the drum channel wants Hannah to do something, you know, and we were thinking like, Hannah's been wanting to play with you. This would be a really cool combination. So I was like, yeah, let's do it. So we drove the band all the way down um, from Arizona, because that's where I'm from. 
and we did the drum channel. And mm -hmm. Hannah's more was more of a like fusion, jazz fusion type drummer. So I mean, we played right. some of my songs that kind of had that feel. And then I was like, yo, I think we should do a funk song, like Let's Do Let's Work by Prince. Mm -hmm. And she was just like, well, I don't really play funk um, so much, but yeah, I think it'd be dope, let's do it. So we did this song and uh, in order for them to get, I guess, permission to, to, to play it, I think they had to contact Prince or his representatives. And okay. that's how he first saw who we were. Wow. That's okay. how he saw who, who, who we were. And um, later on, Hannah became one of the members of Third Eye Girl, uh, Prince's all-female band. Okay. With Peter Nielsen, Donna Grantis, and Hannah Wilton. So wow. that was how he discovered us. And mm. I, I say and a lot. So, um, <laughs> so we, November, like this was like 2012, November. I got okay. a call like 11 p.m., 12 midnight or something. And my phone just kept ringing. And if I don't recognize the number, I just don't answer it. So I was like, who is this? He keeps calling me in the middle of the night. So I finally answered it. And um, he was like, hey, can I speak to Nick West? And I was like, hey, this is Nick. Who is this? And he's like, this is Prince. And I'm like, are you serious? Like, no, really, who is this? Mm -hmm. And so it's like he didn't even respond to me. He was like, hey, I wanted to know if you want to come to Paisley Park and jam with me. And I'm like, yeah, sure, of course, of course. And so he's like, okay, great. How soon can you get here? I'm like, uh, tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, great, we'll fly you out tomorrow. And he hangs up the phone. He's like, bye. And I'm like, wait, what just happened? This is so crazy. And um, mind you, I had a dream about Prince the night before. So it was wow. nuts that this was happening to me. And so he flew me out the next morning. But that night, it's like I stayed up all night working on every single Prince song that I could find. Wow. And so. See, that's I the kind of dedication you need. Yeah. Man. Yeah, I got there. And. Make a long story short, because it's, it's a very long story. Make it short. I didn't play any Prince songs. <laughs> he had me play other songs. Okay. No Prince songs. So no he was Prince like, song. okay, well, I want you to play some Sly and the Family, uh, Sly and the Family song. And I'm like, okay. He's like, do you know, thank you for letting me be myself again. And I'm like, uh, yeah, but it's so crazy, because I'm like, I didn't practice that. Like, I don't really know it. And he's like, mm. all right, play it. So I'm like on the spot having to play the song that I, be honest, I never played before in my life. And right. so I start playing the song from what I remember, from what I've heard before. And so he's like, okay, great. And I, 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 on stage, I do like a demonstration of how I played it versus how he played it when he took my bass. So he took right. my bass and he like slapped it like crazy. And I was like, oh my God. And so he was like, all right, now you play it. This whole time, like, I was so nervous to play around Prince. Like, I had, it's like I froze. I couldn't play. I don't know what was wrong with me. It was nuts. And by this time, I was already a solo artist. So I was already doing my things. Had already met a bunch of people. Um, hmm. So it's like I should have been, but it's Prince. Like, how do you? Yeah. yeah. And so um, he made me feel really comfortable. And after that, he, he's like walking me to my office. So I went to the office with him. And he was like, okay. If you want the job, the job is yours. And look, Mo, I'm telling you, to have a job like that would have been like my ultimate dream. Yeah. But like Dave Stewart had already said, you know, you're a bird, you need to fly. It's like, that's all that I could think of. It was like, okay, but I know that I want to be a solo artist. I know that I really like this freedom and, but it's Prince. And so I ended up not taking the job because what? I didn't take the job because I wanted to continue like being Nick West and, and having this freedom and doing what I did. And it was, and, and people are like, it's so stupid. Like, do you know how much Prince pays? And I'm like, yeah, I know how much Prince pays. Like I have friends that work with Prince. Yes. But yeah, um, yeah. I just wanted to do my own thing. And the crazy thing is Prince really understood that. He told me, he's like, you know, what would it be like if Jimi Hendrix was a part of somebody else's band? Yeah. And I was like, oh. but I'm, I'm not Jimi Hendrix. Like, I'm not even close to Jimi Hendrix. <laughs> he's like, yeah, in more time and you will be. 
And I was like, okay, you know, okay. So, um, you know, I'm giving it time. <laughs> I'm giving it time yeah. to see, to see how this That's a beautiful song story. Unfolds, yeah. Unfolds, you know. Mm-hmm. But um, he was one of my greatest, my greatest mentors. And he always respected my, my, my position. And he called me back several times just to work on projects with him as a, as an artist. So right. it was That's like beautiful. the hardest thing I ever had to do in my life. Such a such a such a beautiful story and very inspiring as well. And the and it I pro, I think a lot of people will take this um as a big learning also from this story. Um to stand up for themselves and do what you really want to and don't be scared of anything, you know. Uh no matter how big of an opportunity comes your way, if your uh mind is set to something, I think you should follow that dream. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Nice. Yeah. Well, that was the last question of our interview. And now we are on to our rapid fire round, which has five questions and uh, really easy oh, ones. Okay. And you got to be quick, quick. Okay. Um, okay. First question. Wait, okay. If you, you could... froze. Hold on. Okay. Hold on. You froze. One second. Uh, okay. You're back. Okay. <laughs> you're back. Okay. Great. So. If you could switch to any other profession, what would it be? Cannot be related to music and don't say engineering because we already know that now. <laughs> I would probably be a teacher. Teacher? What kind of teacher? I would be a teacher. I'd be probably a math teacher um, because I love math. I love kids. I love teaching. And I love doing it in a way that's not boring and that's just really, like, cool. I'd be that cool teacher. I don't know. Right. Like high You'd school be- teachers. You'd be a hot teacher also, though. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) Uh, Second question. What is the worst compliment that you have received so far? The worst? The worst one, yeah. Oh, the worst compliment. um, That I look like Gumby. (laughs) What? (laughs) (laughs) Do you know who Gumby is? It's no. like you Google Gumby and it's just like, what? I don't look like Gumby, but then I, I, I guess I kind of do like with the hair and like I'm tall and skinny and I stretch and do all that. No, stuff. you I'm don't. Like, okay, I get what you're saying, but dang. <laughs> no, not at all. Third question, what annoys you the most? Um, Complainers. Complainers? People hmm. like yes people that complain about everything it's like right i'm the i'm the type of person i see the, I, I see the good in everything right and so it's really hard when i have like that friend that's like oh man it's sunny today oh, yeah yeah like crying <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah as it's like if you don't like something then fix it describe yourself describe yourself in four words Four words. Yeah. Crazy, funny, talented, innovative. Nice. <laughs> Last one. Tell my listeners something that the whole world don't know about you. Oh. Mm. Yeah. Like oh. could be anything. Like like a habit or something that you do every day that they don't know about. Oh, oh, God, this this one's hard. Something that you don't know about me. Well, I don't know. This is, yeah, that doesn't seem that interesting, though. (laughs) (laughs) I have, I I mean, I'm really tall, so I'm I'm like 5'9", but I have really, really tiny, I have really, really small feet. I wear like a six and a half, seven. Okay. So I mean that's something I guess people don't know about me. And my favorite <laughs> thing to eat is like popcorn. Like I love popcorn. Popcorn. I, I really? love popcorn. popcorn. It's like my favorite thing to eat. Um, that's so I, funny. That's so funny. Crunch. Well, with that very question, we are done with the interview. Thank you so much once again for doing this for me. It was lovely having you on my show. And we I had so much fun talking to you. This was the first time we spoke to each other. And it was so much fun. I, 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 I felt like I already know you. 
I had so much fun with you. Thank you for having me. And thank you for staying up so late <laughs> <laughs> to do the interview. Ah, uh, no problem. <laughs> I hope we do something together soon. That'll be awesome. Yeah, that'll be awesome. Let's 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 talk. Let's stay in touch. Yeah, let's do it. Awesome. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.